Hello everyone, my name is Carlos Solis. I am the product evangelist here at Mojo. And here we have a new webinar to show you how to use the liquid language on your Mojo applications. So let's get started creating a new web application. Just go to channels, click on new app, and let's create a new application. In this case, we can create something like uh, liquid language. Click on create. And go to pages. Create a new page. Let's call it. Make sure that um, you have selected the widget page. We will use the content page later, but now um, select widget page and call it liquid test one. So now create that. Now that we have our first page, I will include an HTML element and we can start working on liquid. So let's start by talking a little bit about what is liquid liquid it's an open source language uh, created by shopify you can find more information here on shopify.github.io slash liquid here you can have the documentation official documentation of liquid and now that we are here um we will talk about the uh, basics of liquid and if you notice here at the very beginning of the introduction, we have a couple of elements mentioned, such as the objects and the tags. The objects are the way we can display information and we can use it by displaying double curly braces and the tags is by using curly brace and a percentage. So let's copy this and get started with the syntax of liquid. So here I am back to my module page and we can include um, liquid syntax just like that. And let me include another percentage and close this brace. And now we can include something like a variable. To create a variable, just add the key assign. This way we can create uh, a variable. Now we can include the name, for example, test one and the value such as hello world now to include this information on the html um, right now it's not possible to see it it's just a logical um, sentence here so to include that on our code just need to add for example here we can include html and it's important to mention that um, it's completely possible to mix liquid and HTML. Also, you can include liquid um, on your CSS and um, JavaScript uh, files because liquid is a language that is rendered on the server. That means it doesn't matter where you include it, you can include um, that information and will be rendered on Mojo. Mojo it's also rendered on uh, server side, so the user will have uh, a render version of your uh, code with everything that you have on um, on the code. Um, it will be already rendered with the dynamic values um, retrieved from the server. So back again with the with the example um, to include that information that we have on the variable test one. Just add two braces and close it, and include the name of the, of the variable. For example, test one in this case. Let's save it and we can watch a preview of this page just by clicking on this button called preview. And here we have the value of hello world. Of course, this is just one part of the easiest and, and most simple uh, thing that you can do on uh, liquid. But let's go a little bit further. For example, you can include this information on your code. For example, what if you want to add a dynamic class using liquid. In this case, just let's copy this sentence and change this to my class and assign the value of a class, for example, header, header one, 
um, I will copy this information and include it here. And as I mentioned, we can include any value uh, from liquid into your HTML, CSS, or JavaScript code. So for example, here, if I want to include a class, this is an HTML attribute, just add it here with the double braces and save it. Let's go to the preview page, refresh. And if I click on inspect my browser, Here, we can check that the class header one, it's already on my HTML code. You can reply the same concept on CSS and uh, JavaScript. So what else we can do on, on Liquid? Liquid, it's, um, it's a programming language, but it's limited. Um, so that means we can include not only variables, but also logical operators. So in this case, for example, we can include an if statement, for example, here, let me copy this variable here, and let's call it action. And that action could be show or hide. Let's call, let's include here, the show value. And now, if I have an statement, for example, if I want to include an if, in that case, I need to include the brace and percentage, also close with percentage brace. Now, here we can include uh, logical operators, in this case, if, and the name of the variable, action equals and in this case show so if the value of action is show um, this block will be displayed on screen and to close this block this logical block we just need to close this statement with an end if and everything we have here uh, will be displayed on the page. For example, um, let's include here an H2. And call it action. Click on save. Refresh or preview page. And we can see that the action is displayed, but if we change the action on our logic, for example, for hide, now this block is not displayed. So you can use information from, um, from your web application and display different blocks according to uh, your logic. How you can retrieve information uh, from your web page and including here. We have already information um, available for you on uh, Mojo. You can find more information here in Docs. And for example, you can find information about the liquid syntax and how do we use it just by searching on docs.mojo.com and find for uh, liquid. And here we have the liquid markup. Here you have examples and information about how we use uh, liquid on Mojo. But also we have something called the drops. Just search here for drops. And the drops are information that we already have available for you um, that is um, related to your specific account or your specific uh, page. For example, you can access the, the URL of the page, um, account, and different information that um, it's available already on your page. Also about the content. And in the case that the user is authenticated, you can find information about the current user. So you can create something more uh, customizable according to the user um, characteristics and information and change the HTML based on that. So let's go back to our example and use a little bit of information. Um, let's consume some context um, from, uh, from 
our page. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just keep that saved and go to our content model. So I will open this in a new tab and go to spaces. So we have different spaces uh, here in Mojo and um, the spaces are uh, blocks where you can store information. So here we have a couple of entries. I want to show you these, these entries that we have um, a list of cities. Um, let's pretend that you have a bank and in this bank you have different branches and we want to display the cities where you're located. So here we have four different cities and we want to consume this information. When you create information on the content model here in Mojo, uh, it's possible to consume that information from external, uh, for example, using an API or internal uh, using the liquid language. So we use the liquid language in this example. How we can retrieve that information? Just make sure that you have the information for this space. The name of this space, as you can see here, is my first space. And here we have a couple of entries. And if you notice, we have a type of entries and every single of those entries are branch type. So let's, let's use this information. Um, based on that, I can go back to my page and retrieve a list of the elements that are here. For example, first I need to uh, create a new variable. And in this case, I will open a new statement here with assign entries. And those entries will take information from a space. And as I mentioned, we have the drops. So I can take information from an entry. And as you notice, here we have information from our entries space and every single part of um, the site uh, information that we have in Mojo. So let's go back here and let's go spaces. Um, this is a drop called spaces. And I need to retrieve information from one specific space. I can have several of them. So uh, let's call this using, mm -hmm. I need to close this. Yeah, it seems like, okay. So now I'm gonna type my, first um, space, make sure that uh, you include the name exactly as you have it on your entries. One easy way to retrieve that information is just to make sure that you uh, double check the name or if you want, just copy the name from the URL, which is exactly the name of your space, just to make sure. And yeah, we have it in here. So now I need to retrieve information from that space about one specific type. As you remember, I mentioned that we have the branches type. So let's retrieve just the types called branches. Let's go back to entries just to make sure that we have a type called branches. And now we just call the entries. That means every entry that is that applies for um, that uh, criteria will be uh, retrieving that um, in that variable. So now we have everything we need. And the last part is just um, display the information. In this case, since we're calling several entries, uh, what we will uh, receive from the API, it will be an array. So we need to create a loop uh, using that array. I will copy okay, this block here just to make this quicker. And as you may notice, what I am including here, it's a for loop. Basically, I am um, creating an iteration using entries, just to make sure that we have the information properly here. Yeah, entries. 
and uh, we will use the instance entry. So for each entries we have, we will display one information about an entry. And in this case, I will copy this block here, which is an HTML block displaying information about the entry, the name, and the URL to that entry. Let's save that information. And I will show you in a couple of seconds an easy way to um, call that information that we already have in Mojo. I just want to display that information in order for you to understand how um, Liquid works. So let's go back to the example back here, refresh. And here we have the information from the four branches we have on our institution. So let's go back and let me show you the easier way to call that information and display it on your sites. Let's call this full screen button and let's go back to pages. Here we are on the pages and create a new page. And that's exactly a content page. A content page, it's a kind of page, a special kind of page that retrieves information from our API and um, display that information using Liquid. So the hard part, it's already done. Uh, let me show you how to use it. Now that we have the content page selected, Let's go to space and select one. And as we remember, here we have the my first page on the entries. So let's go back and select that space here, my first space. We already have a type which was called branches. So select it. And now this page will call information that applies for that specific criteria and will retrieve that information and display an array. So now just um, name it as liquid test number two, create. And here we already have information for our test. As you can see, we have two different pages, one called index and one called show. The first one display a list and the other one display information about one specific uh, element that you're selected. Let's focus on the index page where we have a syntax that may be familiar for you at this point. Uh, as you may notice on the line two, we're using the assign entries, which is very similar, like the example that uh, we just did. And here we are using the paginated. We will call, we will talk about this in a couple of seconds. And now on the line four, we have a loop very similar, like the one that we just did. So what can we do with this? As you may remember, um, what we have here is uh, something like a template. And in this case, we can include information from this template. And let's um, see a preview. And now we have a list. And in this case, we're including a URL to display information from one or, or I mean each specific element. So let's ignore this and make sure that um, we can um, add a couple of things more. Um, here on the on the example that we have here, as you may notice on the line two, we have included the paginated. That means we're paginating information in blocks. So you, for example, if we have, uh, I don't know, um, 100 um, different elements, you can paginate those information um, based on a criteria, based on, I don't know, 10 different uh, results per page. But another thing that we can do is to include more filters. In this case, paginated, it's a filter. We can include more. Just include a pipe. And every single time that you include a pipe, that means it's another block um, where you can process the information. In this case, the information from entries. So entries, in this case, it's information that is paginated and we can sort that information, for example, using sort by, and we can sort this information based on any of the properties that we have on these entries. Where you can find those properties, just go here to the entry attributes, click it, and you can see every single 
attribute that we have on the entries. In this specific case, we have title, description, and image um, as attributes that I created. And those um, attributes that you see at the top of the list are attributes that are included automatically. For example, you can use um, information such as updated at or published at to sort information based on the moment that that information was published. You can use this. So I will copy this. And in this case, I will include a couple of changes. Just need to modify this attribute. I just need the name of the attribute. Okay. So now we have the information sort by published. Um, so when that information was published. And we just need to include um, another parameter. For example, we need to sort that information by the moment where that was published, but we need to include if that uh, list will be in an ascendant or descendant order, for example. Just include here ASC as an ascendant order. Save it. And let's go back to the test here. Let me close the others. OK. And here we have uh, information on an ascendant order. As you may notice, Santiago is the last uh, element that we added. For example, if we, if we want to include another more or modify one more, you can uh, see that information change uh, the order. And here, let's go back and change it to a uh, descending order. As D-E-S-C, save it. And remember that Santiago was on the last and Paris was first. Um, if we refresh, it will be the opposite since we changed the order. This is the way that uh, you can use, at least in the basic um, um, use for uh, liquid. Uh, if you want to dig deeper about the um, liquid uh, language, remember to go to shopify.github. .io, where you can find information about uh, the syntax of Liquid. And if you want more information about how we use um, Liquid on Mojo, remember to go to docs.mojo.com and search for the drops or Liquid uh, keywords. You can find information about that. My name is Carlos Solis, and I will see you in another webinar. Bye.